Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox, and I'm coming to you today with a review for Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 10, Episode 8. It's been a while, you guys. Seems like they've been off way longer than they have been. I still wasn't ready for them to come back. <laughs> I gotta get in the mode, y'all. I just got to work, child. They told us we didn't have to be at work until 10 o'clock this morning because of inclement weather, child. It ain't did nothing. It's barely sprinkling and everything. I said, boy, Atlanta gonna get it together, child. But that's okay. We gonna take it. We gonna take it anyway. So, doing this video, then I gotta get on back in there to work. So, you guys, with all that being said, the review, let's get to it, shall we? Now, Candy's at the OLG, and, uh, you know, she's like, it's definitely a family affair at OLG. She got all her peoples running it, okay? Cousin is a hostess, and Riley's sister is a waitress, and she got bartender family and cook family and everything. So, you know, she's trying to keep it as a family affair. The OLG shows up, and, uh, you know, they, they got this concerning look on their faces. They want to talk. And damn it, when the OLG want to talk, then you must listen. So Candy and Ty go downstairs with them, separate them from the rest, because we ain't quite sure what the hell they might say. <laughs> and they sit on down there, and here go Mama Joyce. Child, she done forgot her line. She said, um, we want some changes. Candy and Ty was like, okay, well, what's the changes you need? Um, <laughs> Joyce was like, um, well, the hostess. We want the hostess, um... Um, we want the hostess. The hostess, we want, um, we want the hostess. <laughs> and Bertha was just like, we gonna be here all day. <laughs> I was just like, why y'all didn't get this woman's lines together before y'all got up here on this damn screen? Even Candy and Todd had to laugh because they was like, mama, all you had to do is say, the hostess desk needs to be moved. It's too crowded up there in the front, okay? But uh, Joyce was able to finally get it out. Then Bertha was just like, my thing is this. Uh, the cook. They shirts be dirty. They pants hanging off they behinds. And Todd was like, you're right, you're right. We do need to make some changes with the cook. I have noticed that. I have even said something to him about it. And then, what's the other aunt's name? Norma? I think it's Norma. Norma, you know, she's sweet. She just says that she feels like the uniforms need to be, you know, they need to have more professional uniforms so it'll actually look cohesive like everybody is working for the same team. So they listen because the OLG is, uh, they're using their name and it is their likeness. Is a, from what I understand, it's pictures of them all around the place and even have some meals that's named after them and everything. So, okay, fine. They say they're going to do that. Okay, get the OLG a little time, little camera time on Real Housewives of L.A., Real Housewives of Atlanta and um, make them feel good. Now, later on, Candy and Todd and Don Juan are meeting with uh, potential general managers. They said that their last general manager quit because um, it's a lot of work. The volume that they have at that restaurant, something tells me that um, even though they are very busy and, you know, when we see it on social media, they look like they're having a good time and everything. Behind the scenes is quite chaotic <laughs> and uh, they probably, ha seems like they have a lot of high turnover if you can't keep your general manager in place then you know that's the top everything underneath there is probably real shaky so they need somebody that really has their um <laughs> their thumb on the pulse of the staff okay so they have this guy come in and um he's got his degree, and I think he said some sort of hotel management or restaurant management or whatever, and um, he's done his research. He even talks about the um, approval rating on the restaurant being three stars and below. He feels like he can make a difference there, okay, that he has a passion for this kind of thing and all of that. So after they talk to him and he leaves, um, Don Juan was just like, you know, I like him, but he might just be talking a good talk. Okay, well, at least he did do some research, okay, and show some concern. You need somebody that can come in there and can crack the whip a little bit, consider, you know, considering you guys are talking about how the OLG shows up and it might be some confrontation with them. And I mean, you need to get everybody on the same page and in line, okay? You can't just be having motherfuckers going in there and cussing out the general manager and all of that, okay? They are their likeness, but let the general manager do his damn job so i can imagine i can imagine what it's like but uh yet and still the restaurant is doing really well so if they could just get somebody in there that really can run the place well you know it, it, it'll be smooth they gotta see so i guess maybe they're gonna hire the guy and then 
you know, see how he works out. Y'all been to OLG? I still haven't been there. It is always too crowded. There's lines and shit. I can't be doing lines, y'all. So, uh, I'll get there eventually. There and uh, K. Michelle's Place. I heard K. Michelle's Place has really good food. Anybody been there? Y'all let me know. So, Kenya is going to be doing a PSA on domestic violence, and she's going to be executive producing it. She's got Derek Blanks is going to be the director. He's that, you know... A famous photographer out here in Atlanta. She said that she's really taken hold of this whole project. You know, she was even abused in certain relationships starting when she was 16 years old. She was in a relationship with somebody that was 11 years older than her and it got so bad that he stabbed her. I said, what girl? We hadn't heard that story before, but uh, yeah, so she's been in domestic violence situations, so that's why she really wants to get this PSA, you know, this PSA done. She invites Sheree down there to um, because she wants Sheree to be involved as well. You guys, I could barely keep my eyes, um, off of Sheree's head. I couldn't even concentrate on what they were saying, because I was just like, who? That blonde is, ugh. Older people shouldn't do shit like that. Like, it's, I know blonde is the end and everything, but it's such a bright blonde. It's not becoming on Sheree, I should say. I mean, it looked wiggy. I was just like, girl, you gonna stop it with these fucking storm wigs. I mean, it was bad enough that we had to deal, deal with it in the confessional. That little short, you know, bangs and the waves and shit. But then she had the nerve to come out with the 24 inch. I said, girl, not the 24 inch. <laughs> anyway, Sheree wants to be a partner in this PSA, but she doesn't really have any experience on producing and directing or you know, she just doesn't know. She, I'm just like, what do you want to do? You want to have your name on the project, but you don't know how to do anything as far as producing is concerned? Girl, go sit down somewhere. Sheree always trying to come in on somebody else's gig. She get on my damn nerves. Now, later on, <clears throat> Candy goes over to Sheree's house. Um, you know, they're going to have girl talk. So they're talking about this PSA. And again, Sheree is telling her how she's going to help Kenya, um, even though she hasn't heard from Kenya about helping out. Okay, that's because Kenya is thinking of you as a damn intern, maybe, and not as no um, co-producer or anything like that, girl. So she, Kenya probably was just like, ain't nobody thinking about Sheree. So while they're in there sitting talking, you know, Candy brings in the mess. Well, Nene said that your man was a con artist. Sheree was just like, you know what, that Nene got her damn nerves. Okay, Nene been arrested. She got her own mug shot. Yes, I did see the clip of Nene on um, Watch What Happens Live last night. <laughs> Ooh, we she talked about Sheree and the fact that she got her record expunged and how she has a mugshot, her son got a mugshot, her man got a mugshot, that she was still it in some store. Like, I was just like, <laughs> and Nene is a mess. And child Andy just be soaking it up, just loving her, getting her in all kind of trouble, just talking. But anyway, she says that she ain't worried about what Nene thinks. Okay, Candy was just like, well, when does he get out? Oh, he gets out it's supposedly at the end of the year, maybe. She didn't put in that it could be four, five more years, you know. <laughs> Leave that out for now. And uh, Candy was just like, well, is he coming back here to stay? And uh, Sheree says, not initially. Okay, we're going to give him a couple of days to get his shit from wherever it is and bring it on over to the house. All right? Girl, you was acting like you was ready to get married and do all of this as soon as he hit the damn streets. But now, all of a sudden, you don't want to look stupid in front of Candy because Candy is like, honey, I have been a fool. We all done been a fool, but damn it, I don't want you to be this kind of fool at damn near 50 years old, Sheree. Come on now. Come on now. Child, I came with Sheree. Now, we see Marlo and Nene. They get together for uh, their own version of Girl Talk. You know, them two is just a whole bunch of shade, but it's funny. So they sit down, and Nene is telling Marlo about this PSA that Kenya's going to be doing. She's like, oh, about the fact that she's not married? <laughs> Why would she be doing a PSA about that, Marlo? Just a fucking mess. Nene was like, no, girl, on domestic violence. And um, Nene is so, um, you know, she's in turmoil because Portia's going to be there. And she don't know how it's going to be, you know, being around Portia, considering the last time that they were together, you know, it didn't go all that well. Marlo says, you know what? I, I, I really feel like you two need to sit down and talk. It's just always so funny. On all of the reality shows, the formula is... To keep the shit going, it's to act like you're trying to get these two to, you know, become friends and talk, but knowing that it's like oil and water and that they're going to be fighting again. But you know what Marlo says? No, she's going to get them together to talk. She's going to have a tea at the Hamptons, okay? Hamptons, and Marlo's last name is Hampton. So she's going to invite them over. 
Um, really, it's only going to be Nene, Cynthia, Portia, and Marlo. So, just a little small little tea time, I suppose, um, and see if they can get it together. You know, Nene says that, uh, you know, Portia still doesn't want to admit to anything, you know, yada, yada, yada. I just be so tired of Nene. It's always Nene's way. She wants you to admit whatever it is that Nene feels. If you don't agree with her, then the problem just will continue to stay. She doesn't realize that other people have other opinions and other views of things. So her truth might not be somebody else's truth. It's so tiring. But I mean, you know, that's what they on the show for. So I guess. Now we see... Cynthia and Noel, you know, Cynthia's cooking up um, some linguine for Noel and Will calls. And he was just like, oh, what are you guys doing? Cynthia's all, uh, you know, making some linguine. And he was like, oh, now if you was making turkey, then I would have been over. I would have been like, nigga, ain't nobody invited your mother. I hate when people do that. Like, don't invite yourself. Because my smart ass mouth would have been like, baby, ain't no turkey over here. Okay. As a matter of fact, it's only linguine for me and my damn daughter. Ain't nobody told you to. <laughs> to bring your ass down here wait for the invite assuming shit but whatever you know cynthia was giggling and laughing okay maybe i can go get some turkey you know noel's just like well when am i going to meet him and cynthia says no you're not going to be able to meet him until shit is exclusive we we know will is still out there on tv shows and whatnot trying to get him a date so as of now nene Nene. Noel will not be meeting um Will. While they're sitting there talking, Cynthia gets a text message from uh, Marlo saying how she is going to have the tea at the Hamptons and that Cynthia needs to come. It's going to be Nene, Cynthia, and Portia trying to get Nene and Portia to bury the hatchet. And Cynthia was just like, you know what, I'm there because, you know, I, if I was able to fix my problems with Nene and we didn't talk, okay, Portia and Nene should be able to fix their problems as well. Okay, so now Cynthia is on board. Then we see Portia, and she's at work, and she's talking to Ricky Smiley about dating. This was the scene where everybody thought that Ricky Smiley and her were kissing. I had never seen the clip. So when I finally saw the scene, I was just like, they weren't kissing. I mean, I guess it could have looked like that in a clip, you know, a preview for the show or something. But I was just like, I know Portia and Ricky Smiley ain't going to be going there. I don't even know how the rumor was, but somebody left in my comments. It was just like, did you see that Portia and Ricky Smiley was kissing? I was just like, ugh, no. I'm sure she's not going there. I mean, she went on and on about, you know, how she thought about, you know, dating Ricky Smiley, but considering that they work together, he's not her boss, but they work together, and that just wouldn't work out well. I was just like, girl, you ain't never thought about dating no damn Ricky Smiley. Never once in your entire life. Cut it out. So she talks to him about, you know, the blind date that she went on and, um, you know, how the dating people was trying to set her up with Ricky Smiley. But, you know, that ain't that that ain't fixing to happen. Then she goes to hair and makeup, getting set set up for her um, dish job. And Marlo calls her and lets her know that uh, she's having this tea. And Portia was like, well, who's going to be there? And she says, well, it's just you, Nene, Cynthia, and myself. And uh, Portia was just like, okay, well, I don't know. But, you know, maybe if we can just sit down and talk and get past me and Nene's issues, then, you know, we can move forward. So Portia says, okay, I'm game. Now, the tea. <clears throat> Cynthia gets there to Marlo's first. You guys, Marlo's place is beautiful. Y'all, we still ain't figured out what Marlo does. I mean, of course, there's a bunch of rumors. I mean, I've heard everything from her being Ted Turner's kept woman into, you know, her dealing with some guy that's in jail, some drug dealer that's been in jail for years and years and years and years and that he just gives her money. Um, I'm just thinking, like, what drug dealer still has that kind of money to be sustaining? Even if they had been in jail all that time, their money would have been ran dry by now, okay? I'm more inclined to believe the Ted Turner <laughs> story, but I look, I don't know what she do because Marlo never says. She lets everybody just kind of think about whatever they think that she does. That Marlo always has the most current fashions, 2018 Chanel, Gucci, like all of this runway. I'm just like, that girl is right. Her place is beautiful. Cynthia comes, so she's never been there. 
um, admires the place, but um, then they, you know, she's saying that she's hoping that Nene and Portia is able to figure it out. Um, Portia comes and she feels the same way. Her place is beautiful, um, and also says that you know, hopefully, you know, she can just tell her how she feels. You know, maybe Nene will come around. I was like, girl, if you if you waiting on Nene to um, be sympathetic to how you feel, <laughs> this is not gonna go well because Nene never really cares. And then, sure enough. Nene comes. She tells us she's going to see what Portia got to say. Okay. Never nothing that Nene's done because in her mind, it's just all Portia. So Portia going to come to her and basically admit that, um, you know, Nene was there for her when she went through her shit. Just the same shit. Okay. But Nene says she's not going to hold her breath. She would rather hold her wig. Okay. So they sit down, and long story short, they don't come to no conclusions. Because Nene still feels the same way, that she was supportive of Portia um, when Portia was down. And then when Portia got back on the good foot, she ignored Nene. Nene tried to text her. She wouldn't return the text messages. Um, Portia said, you did that twice. And all of a sudden, you say that I'm not talking to you. And Nene said it was way more than that. Okay, so... They, they they don't come to any sort of conclusion, okay? It's the same as it was. Portia says, I'm tired of trying to be the adult here. It's just nothing. It's nothing. We we can't fix this. It's just, that's it. Marlo was just like, you guys are the worst. <laughs> the worst guest. I'm never going to invite you anywhere again. They didn't tear up her house. I know Marlo was like, bitch, it's a whole bunch of expensive ass shit in here. Don't be fucking up my place, okay? But definitely the argument, um, although very um, subtle and low-key, uh, it's obvious that Portia and Nene, they, they ain't never going to be what they was if they even do ever become friends again. Shoot day of this PSA comes, and Kenya's got her executive producer hat. Okay, she has Shamia come down there, and the rest of the girls as well. Everybody is going to be involved in the project. Okay, so um, Shamia is given her story of her domestic violence. She had been married some 10 years ago. Um, her first husband, they were probably both young, probably both on the go, um, probably didn't need to be married, um, and he was abusive to her, knocked her out of her damn shoes. Okay, because she was trying to hang with her girls, and um, yeah, that didn't work out. So she gives her emotional story. Then we have um, Candy. Candy shows up, and Candy says she's never been abused, but I've seen many of my friends go through it. So she wants to do whatever she can to help. So she does her speech that Kenya has written for her. Nene says that she was abused when she was younger, okay, back when her stripping days. She used to be with this guy. He would hit her, and that she equated that with love. I mean, you hear a lot of girls say things like like that so she thought it was normal then she realized that she was actually being abused and she got out of that relationship okay in walked greg we've heard that story before sheree sheree is not there all right while kenya's in makeup because she also has to go before the camera um she calls sheree like where are you and sheree says that she had an accident somebody ran into the back of her um but you know the connection is bad and you can't really hear what's going on but sheree says something about somebody hit her from the back and her back is really hurting and um, she's a little dizzy i don't know if she hit her head or, or what okay so kenya's just like oh no like are you okay are you gonna be okay but they lose the connection. Next, we have Cynthia's mom. She's going to do her part. Um, she was abused, an abused wife back when Cynthia was a baby. Cynthia's father used to abuse her. So she sits down in front of the camera and she gives her emotional story. She even starts crying. Cynthia wants to go to her mom and comfort her, but Cynthia, I mean, uh, Kenya's just like, no, 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 leave her alone. Let her, let her talk. The mom just basically tells a story about how the husband would beat her and to the point where she pulled a knife, she didn't kill him. She didn't stab him, but that let her know that she, she needed to be out of this. And since then, she's never let another man hit her and that no woman should deal with that. They need to get out. And then, um, after Cynthia's mom, Portia, shows up and she does her her little segment. Um, she even is able to say hi to Nene and there's no issue. I was like, well, at least Nene and Portia got sense enough to know that this is a day where we don't need to be having y'all drama. Portia does her part whatever that part they give her and then uh, Sheree shows up now Sheree is in pain she's crying she says her back is hurting I mean I was just like <laughs> I 
I really need to be sympathetic, okay? I understand, like, I have back issues, too. My back be fucked up. You guys know it's been years, knock on wood, thank you, Jesus, whatever it is that you believe out there. Um, but I have sciatica, so at any time, it might be years that I don't have no pain, and then all of a sudden, a nigga can't barely walk, okay? And that should'll last for months, Okay, remember last time I had that real bad pain down my leg? That shit lasts for months, nerve problems, all of that. So, I mean, I understand. But I was just like, why you didn't go to the doctor if it was that bad? I mean, you crying. That means that it's really that bad. Because I have been in terrible pain. Sometimes that shit hurts so bad that you can't cry. You just be like, <gasps> you know, take your damn breath. You be walking real <laughs> I'm not gonna okay, I let me let me be sympathetic. Okay. Sheree is crying. She's in pain, but she says that, you know, it was very important for her to come to this um thing. So not thing, this PSA though. So she gets up and she does her part and then, you know, everybody else they get the group together and everybody has their one word that they're gonna say and it's the PSA and okay, it's a wrap. Okay, so it's a successful day, no drama. Everybody on the same page, all talking about the seriousness of domestic violence, and uh, everybody is getting along, at least for now. All right, you guys, let me get off of here, get on to work, make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks, the channel is Sports Rocks, everything else I do be in the bottom bar. All right, all right, so I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. I plan on doing the same. Till next time, Rockstars. Bye.